They're calling it a powerful aftershock, but it's not actually an aftershock. It actually is uh, a, a whole ass earthquake on its own. Earthquake has struck the Turkey Syrian border region. Now, at this point in time, we understand it has a magnitude of 6.4. I guess, like, the weird silver lining is that because the earthquakes uh, and the recovery was already happening, I think, like, this one is not going to have as much immediate damage, I think, but I'm not sure. Given how fucking uh, awful the Turkish infrastructure has been thus far, the buildings are already damaged, so most people are not, like, going back into buildings, at least, like, never did in uh in the uh in the istanbul earthquake right in the in the 99 earthquake i hope people were not inside of the remaining standing buildings um because i from what i understand they uh, this this basically like took down a lot of the other remaining buildings as well so far from the from the old earthquake the number is at forty seven thousand. um from the new earthquake now uh 200 uh, recent. This is like the most recent news from literally eight minutes ago from Ibrahim Haskololu. Right now in Hatay, which is uh, one of the other, uh, I mean, this was one of the most impacted sites from the prior earthquake, uh, which again, like I said, has led to 47,000 casualties. Um, same area. Uh, the new earthquake has led to uh, at least 213 injured and three dead on top of the 47,000. This is one of the immediate ones here. This is the new one that just happened, okay? Yuhan Tugal says the Anglophone, oh, fucking Berkeley so sociologist. He says the Anglophone coverage of Turkish Syrian earthquake is upsetting. The crushing majority of reporters and commentators, including Turkish ones, focus only on the national and ignore the global making of the catastrophe. Below the anchor asks, how do you explain people getting angry at an earthquake? The commentator explains, because the destruction is political. It's due to inequalities, and it wouldn't be at this scale in another country. That's true, though. This kind of coverage expects us to believe that causes of response to disasters in good countries are not political. Want to look at the facts? Do you remember Hurricane Katrina, the thoroughly racial causes and consequences of destruction? Well, this is actually a really good example because I literally use this exact same example when talking about how American disaster relief is also, uh, uh, also, uh, you know, definitely identical in the same way, even though it's marginally better, and therefore it will still be a little bit better. The reaction will be a little bit better. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The lack of planning. Levees being built specifically in Louisiana to protect wealthy neighborhoods levees being built higher than they're supposed to be uh in in wealthy neighborhoods was a major reason for why poorer neighborhoods were flooded because levees are supposed to be built a certain way so that like there is a there's mass dispersion of water okay but they didn't do that right that is environmental racism that's systemic racism a structural racism they did that on purpose they did that deliberately wealthy neighborhoods are neighborhoods where white people live for the most part or neighborhoods or neighborhoods where white people still live, but mostly black and brown people. California wildfires. Do you think they're not political? Yes, in California, I do feel safer in regards to earthquakes because of many reasons. Chief among them is the proper use of technology. Okay. When you admit that, though, you have to admit that Turkey doesn't do that. But I also know the global background of this development. Have you ever checked out a carbon map? The core capitalist countries have been destroying nature for centuries and the poor ones bear the burden. That is to say, the ecological cost of our comfort in the West has been externalized. That is an ongoing process. I know things look cleaner here than in Turkey, yet it is the plunder of Africa and South America. I mean, this guy's right. He's not wrong. I mean, this is the, the same old, uh, this is literally the same old process over and over again. He's not wrong. Um, our relatively clean existence here is political. It is based on inequalities and it is at the expense of nature and other people. Less of us die here in ecological calamities because other people are already dying for us. You might still say there are many less advanced countries where things aren't as bad as Turkey. Why is that? And don't even ask me about Syria since you already know what your proxy war put in the situation. Countries like Turkey appear to have two choices. They either accept their middling place in global hierarchies or their capitalism becomes as wild and destructive as the European capitalism of the mid-19th century, but now equipped with state capitalist tools in order to catch up. Erdogan is used, especially the construction sector in this game of catching up. Oh, this is very good, actually. 
I, 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 okay. No, he, he's so right about this, but this is literally what this is. He's basically describing this. When Turkish people talk about the inequality in the country, when per- Turkish people talk about like the, the lack of support and the government in this country and why it wouldn't happen in another country in a similar capacity, they're basically comparing the United States of America to Turkey and saying that it's literally this, what he's describing here, that like uh, Erdogan's, uh, Erdogan's development, Erdogan's development projects were, were on overdrive because it was politically fashionable for him to do so. <sighs> that is precisely why Turkey's self-destruction is also coming through poorly constructed airports, roads, and buildings. Turkey stuck to the first path before 1980 and fully embraced the second after 2002. Things would have been better if it had struck so it's servile ways, but not much better as the 1999 earthquake shows. Yeah. Forcing Turkey to revert to its pre erdogan path, as the commentator below suggests we should, would give the West ease of mind, but would not go to the root of problem. The change has to be global. While we are fighting for global change, I hope Turkey gets rid of these rapacious developers at the top, but doesn't replace them with milder developers who produced the 1999 calamity. The latter are the mainstream West candidates for perpetuating business as usual. Okay, I, I do like it. I, I take it back. He, I mean, he spat by the end of it. At first, I thought he was just going to be like a semantics, like annoying and, and talk about like the semantics of the situation. But he's just looking at it as a, as a you know, uh, from a anti-capitalist perspective, um, which is that these issues are global. You will not be able to, you, you will not be able to like find a perfect solution, um, especially because the, at the heart of the problem is capitalism and that a social democratic liberal party that comes into power is probably going to revert back to the 1999 pre Erdogan days of development, which as we all know, as you guys know in the chat, because I talked about my own personal experiences from the 99 earthquake was still genuinely a calamity and was devastating. It's just things have gotten even worse. But the solution, of course, will not be uh, the, the Social Democratic Liberal Party. The solution would only come through uh, a, a, a you know, genuine change, a dramatic change in... Uh, a dramatic change in, in uh, the way that the Turkish economy is organized. That's just an assumption from him. Who was in power before occupying in the 90s? Turkey had a, a different approach that was still very much capitalist, obviously, but at least like there was, uh, there was a more liberal attitude, even from right-wing parties. Erdogan... Many people in Turkey only talk about Erdogan from the perspective of social conservatism. But one thing that Recep Tayyip Erdogan did was accelerate the privatization of previously nationalized industries, um, all the way from telecommunications to, uh, you know, even fucking beer. You know what I mean? Like, that, the entire beer development wasn't nationalized, but, like, Turkey had national breweries, for example. You know what I mean? So, um... That, that definitely came after the Erdogan regime, which is why the West actually loved the Erdogan regime and still kind of loves the Erdogan regime. You know? Yeah, it's just like... Uh, the, the Social Democrats at least maintained the, the veneer that they cared about the people and, and had, uh, you know, had less of an inclination towards neoliberalism. But Erdogan... And his many privatizations, uh, his many uh, privatization initiatives originally gave a big economic boon, okay? Not a real one, but uh, on paper, it made Turkey look better, okay? Um, that, especially the, the rampant privatization, uh, seemingly allowed Turkey to avoid the financial catastrophes of the pigs, Portugal, uh, Greece... Spain, like when the EU was falling apart, when certain EU nations were falling apart, it seemed like Turkey was doing a better job avoiding the, the uh, economic disasters, but that was also short-lived. It was just, you know, it, it wasn't real. It wasn't a real uh, way to, to avoid the, the economic disasters.